people who are allowed on the show, Helen Clark, she's my b She's not really, she's... Call me. Please watch Samika Moa's show called All Talk with Samika Moa. Thank you very much, New Zealand. <laughs> New Zealand's organ donation rates are pretty poor by world standards. Perhaps you could even call them abysmal. Let's have a look at some of the numbers very quickly. New Zealand is 28th in the world for deceased organ donors. Uh, 2014 statistics report just 10 donors per million people in New Zealand. That's compared with Spain, which tops the list with 36 donors per million people. Croatia is also right up there, second best, with 35 people per million. Australia, 16. So 10 donors per million people in New Zealand. Well, right now that is not good. And right now 500 people are on the waiting list in New Zealand for a kidney alone. There could, though, be change underway. There is now cross-party support in Parliament for donors to be fully compensated for their recovery time after making a donation, in many cases estimated at 12 weeks. Joining me now is organ donation campaigner Andy Tukey. Andy, good morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us again. Hi, Paul. Um, since we last spoke, there has been a change. This announcement yesterday that there was unanimous support for 100% compensation for those 12 weeks for live organ donors. Do we know how big a difference that might possibly make to donor rates? Um, well, first, firstly, I think we need to uh, make clear that this is just for live donors. Yes. Um, the deceased organ donor rate, of course, is, as you pointed out, is probably one of the worst in the world. So this will only address those who, people who want to be live donors. But now, our, our, our live what... donor rate, though, Andy, is also is 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 also woeful, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's it's pretty poor, mm. and one of the reasons for this bill being put forward to, was to address some of those problems. Um, now, back in 2002, I put in a petition to Parliament about uh, proper compensation for organ donors. Mm. So mm. it's only taken 14 years to get <laughs> to this stage, but I'm I'm pleased it is here now finally, um, <laughs> because it's, it's just a lot of people uh, are declining to be live organ donors because they can't afford to you know pay a mortgage, feed the kids and donate a kidney to, say, a family member. Okay, so that comes back to my original question. I mean, do we know the extent to which this is going to make a difference? Because that would surely be only one of the reasons that people decline being live donors. That's right. We don't have, uh, unlike the deceased organ donor rate, we have no real idea of uh, how much it will improve uh, people's willingness to be live donors. Um, most of it is uh, anecdotal. Uh, and mm -hmm. when I was at Parliament, there was a lot of people who fronted up to the Select Committee and said that the financial barriers you know, were the main reason. So I would um, hope for a significant increase in live donors on the back of this bill. Uh, the, the, the one thing that we have to say is there is no profit to be made. And of course, people are uh, standing in the way of that because it would be an appalling situation if people were able to sell organs. So there's no profit. It literally is just constant. It, it, it literally is just making up for money that, you know, costs incurred in lost wages. One of the things that you wanted as well was for travel and accommodation to be taken into consideration. Um, a smaller cost, I suppose, for people. That hasn't been taken into consideration. Is that a problem? I believe that the Ministry of Health are going to report back to the Select Committee uh, on that issue. Now, the original bill was set at 80% uh, of mm, uh, mm. your wage, wages lost, and I fronted up to the committee and I said, well, you know, why should you lose 20% of your wages to save somebody else's life? And of course, each person you take off the uh, dialysis machines is saving the health system $120,000 per person as well. So it's not only saving lives, but uh, savings in the uh, financial side to the uh, Ministry of yeah, Health. This is not a cost. This so is not said, a cost to the taxpayer. This is an investment. That's right. And uh, I, so I argued for 100 uh, percent. You shouldn't be out of pocket at all. In fact, I did try and push it a bit further and say it should be 110 percent um, to take into account pain and suffering, which you can't quantify. Right. Um, but also, there's a lot of expenses uh, that the donor uh, is likely to have as well. For instance, travelling the multiple times of sure. travelling back and forth to hospitals, uh, taxi costs, hotel costs. Uh, this is costs. though, Andy, this is a major step in the right direction and the hope is of course that this will be passed and it will be in place by the end of the year. 
Absolutely, and um, it, it still has to pass through Parliament. Sure. But I, uh, I don't, I don't think there'd be any um, political party or, or MP uh, brave enough to. Uh, I or dumb think you're absolutely right. It. Yeah, yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Andy. So it's a congratulations to you. Still, there's a lot of work to be done, but this is a big step in the right direction. Yeah.